Welcome to our Easter service. We're so glad you're here with us. It is church tradition to say he is risen and the response is to say he is risen indeed. So let's do that together this morning. He is risen. Ah, oh, that's so wonderful. Don't forget to text the number 208-547-5494. And let us know who was worshiping with you today. You can just list the names right there in your text. And also in this unusual time, we're remembering that the church is not our building. We are the church. And we would love to be able to show love to each other, the love of Christ to each other. And that is what our SHARE project is. It's a way for people to say that they have a need or a way for people to say that they want to meet a need. So if you want to participate in that, you can go to tfnavs.church slash sign up and you can find a way to participate whether you have a need or you want to meet a need. And one last thing, we wanted to bring a little something fun to our worship time for our kids or maybe our kids at heart. So we brought a little game for us to all play together this morning before we get to our worship time. This is called Wind Up Warriors. And we're just gonna have it right here on the screen so you guys can pick the little wind up animals that you wanna cheer for. So I encourage you to cheer for your animal, maybe stand up and shout a little bit, bring the kids in and everybody cheer on for whatever animal that you want to win. All right, let's play.
Hey, morning church from VR Bar Ranch. Out here on the farm this morning. Just finished feeding the cows and um, just a beautiful morning. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And we just want to celebrate the gift of himself this morning to us. And uh, nobody thought we'd be in this place uh, celebrating Easter out here and each of us in our own homes. But God can use that and use the, the best of what he's given to us in him, his son this morning. And uh, we just know that he's going to see us through this. And we can rejoice because he is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ the Lord. good this morning and uh, 
Just glad that we can worship together, no matter where you're at this morning. God is good, and he's here with us. But when this perishable we have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? Or, or death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yeah. 
it in my life begin. And from 1 Corinthians. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to wash our feet. Now at his feet we bow. The one who wore our sin and shame now robed in majesty. The radiance of perfect love shines for Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. The fear that held us now gives way to Him who is our his final breath upon the cross is now alive in me. Your name, your name is victory. Our praise will rise to Christ our King. you didn't leave me hanging right there oh man isn't it good to know that he is risen not that he was risen 2,000 years ago but that he is risen that Jesus Christ has defeated death and the grave that he is risen and that he brings about new life in us today and in every circumstance that we find ourselves in it's good to know today especially as we look at the world around us that is in 
chaos and, and many of us are anxious or worried, that we can know that God is bringing about new life, even right now. And so today, as we go to prayer, we are invited to remember that the God who brought forth Jesus from the grave is still the one who brings about new life in us. And so we can give to him anything that's going on in our lives and ask that he would bring about new life in it. And so I invite you to take a posture that is comfortable for prayer today and let's go to our Father who is so good and loving and ask that he would bring about new life in us. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for you today. We are so thankful that you are a God who continues to bring about new life, that you bring about new life in us and you bring about new life in every circumstance that we find ourselves in. God, today we lift to you the thing that weighs upon all of our hearts right now, the thing that we can't escape, the thing that all of our lives have been affected by recently. God, we lift to you the coronavirus and all of its effects. And God, we ask for your healing to come about in our world. We ask for new life to spring forth from death, from all the chaos and the destruction and the disruption that is happening in all of our lives. God, today we lift to you specifically those who have been diagnosed with coronavirus all over the world. God, we ask that you would bring healing to them. We ask that you would be with those who are caring for them. We lift all of the healthcare workers around the world who are putting themselves in harm's way to bring about new life for other people. God, we ask that you would bless them. We ask that you would protect them today and that you would keep them safe as they reach out and care for other people. God, we ask that you would be with those of us who have been affected by coronavirus in other ways. Those of us who have felt the effects financially, those who, who have, have um, been affected in our, our regular routines and in our schedules. God, we ask that you would bring order out of this chaos, that you would provide for those of us who are in need, that you would help us to remember that you are a generous God. And so you may ask many of us who are doing well right now to reach out and to care for those who are in need. God, would you equip us and empower us and strengthen us to be your hands and feet, to be the ways in which you want to provide for those who need it. God, we ask that you would be with those of us who are in need in other ways. And God, I lift to those uh, of us who are um, in the midst of uh, difficulties in, in our physical lives that are not uh, affected by the coronavirus. God, those of us who have been sick, those of us who have cancer diagnoses, uh, those of us who are recuperating from surgeries and recovering, God, we ask that you would bring healing, that you would bring strength to our bodies. God, we ask that you would just be so present with us and that you would be with those who care for us, that we might know your healing grace through the love and the care of other people. God, today we lift to you other situations in, in our community and, and in our world. God, we know that coronavirus and its effects have um, really uh, taken up all of the news, but there are a lot of things going on. We know that there is still violence all over the world, and, and we know that that brings pain and hurt to your heart. And so, God, we ask that you would help us, that you would put an end to the violence and the wars that are happening all over the world, and that you would equip us to be the hands and feet of peace, that you would help us to be people who reconcile in all sorts of ways, that you would be with leaders who are involved in these conflicts all over the world, and that you would give them a vision for a life of peace and restoration, that those that they lead would experience new life because of you and the ways that you are working through these leaders. God, we ask that you would be with the poor all around the world, 
that you would provide for them and that you would care for them, that you would help them to know that you identify with them, that your son grew up and lived as one who was poor and that they might know that they are not alone, that they are cared for by you. God, we lift to you uh, the individuals in our church who are going through difficult times in their relationships with family members or with friends. God, we ask that you would bring about reconciliation in their lives, that you would help them to mend these re relationships, and that you would give them courage to be the ones who ask for forgiveness, and that you would strengthen them to forgive of any wrongdoing that they have encountered. And God, we know that is difficult at times, but help us to know that's one of the ways that you bring about new life is through forgiveness and reconciliation in our relationships. God, we ask that you would be with our church, that you would be with us as we go through this season leading up to Pastor Andy and his family coming to join us, that you would prepare us for their arrival and that you would open up our hearts for the ways in which you want to work in our lives through Pastor Andy. We ask that you would be with the Albright family. We ask that you would be with them as they transition. Uh, God, we ask that, um, that you would help them as they get all of the different things in order for them to move, to be with us. God, we ask that you would be with the Newport Church, uh, that you would give them wisdom and direction as they move forward and as they look for their next pastor. And God, we ask uh, that you would continue to be with us today. We thank you for a wonderful time of worship and song and praise to you. God, we ask that you would be with Pastor Libby as she brings the word to us in a moment. May they be your words of new life to us. And may you do your work in us through the things that she says to us today. And Father, again, we say thank you. Thank you for all the ways you are at work, even the ways that we don't see or comprehend. We ask that you would help us to be a part of your kingdom work. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's so good to worship with you, even from afar. And our worship is one of the ways that we give to God, that we give praise to him through our words and our actions. But we can give to him in many ways, and we can give to God financially. And so we encourage you to please continue to give. If you would like to give, you can do so on our website, tfnaz.church slash give. Um, or you can also mail checks to us at 1231 Washington Street North here in Twin Falls, Idaho, 83301. The ways that you give are ways that we can bless other people in our community. And, and you know as well as we do that we need to be doing that attentively right now. So we encourage you to please continue to give um, as God has given to you. And now finally, uh, we're so excited today to welcome Pastor Libby to preach to us this morning. Hey, good Easter morning or afternoon or evening, whenever you are catching our live stream. I'm Pastor Libby Gertis, and uh, perhaps you've already heard this, but I'm just going to say it from the get-go. This isn't how I had uh, envisioned Easter, especially one of the first Easters that I have gotten to preach. Um, and I'm sure you're kind of in that same boat. In fact, about 12 months ago, I remember one of our staff members saying to the team, hey, just be aware, you guys need to start planning Easter early this year, especially as we don't have a lead pastor. Well, uh, we did just that. About three or four months ago, we met as a team and began planning out our Easter services. Well, you know what happened, didn't you? COVID-19. And so even the best laid plans, and you know how that goes. And there is something to that, isn't there, though? Our plans that can frequently go awry. Our expectations not necessarily met. Our time, our creativity, our energy wasted. <laughs> and for what? A pandemic. The audacity of a pandemic to change my plans. <laughs> and you know what's going to happen, don't you? 
COVID-19, uh-huh. Everybody isolating at home, millennials, generation Xers, baby boomers. Mark my words, about 10 years, maybe 2033, you're gonna have an influx of quarantines. <laughs> I know, <laughs> dumb joke. And maybe we shouldn't joke about COVID-19. It's pretty serious. But if you can't laugh, uh, <laughs> what do you have? You have a whole lot of stress in your life, don't you? And Americans know stress, even before this crisis. The American Institute of Stress cites Gallup in 2019 saying 55% of Americans are stressed out every day. Women are more stressed out than men. And from a study done by Everest College, also in 2019, 83% of U.S. workers suffer from some sort of work-related stress. So, kind of begs the question, what's stressing you out today? Stress is a state of mental or emotional strain, tension resulting from the adverse or very demanding circumstances. Circumstances like a change of plans, loss of a job, or unmet bills, unmet expectations, and certainly uncertainty about our future. When people are stressed out, the bandwidth for their patience can run especially thin. Clarity can be replaced with a perpetual fog. And as stress mounts and the familiar becomes the unfamiliar, frequently emotional disorientation can take place, which causes us to forget sometimes <laughs> the most simplest of processes or memories. Uh, what day is it today? It's Easter. And so today, we are going to celebrate the risen Savior. And we are going to take a look at the story of Easter, the story of Christ's resurrection from the dead, something no one expected, which caused a change in how the disciples viewed Scripture and maybe even each other, and created some uncertainty about how this would change the world and, and their future, maybe even create some hostility towards them. So, let's take a look today at what God offers to us in Scripture as we share together the story of Easter. And if you have your Bibles or maybe a Bible app, if you want to turn with me to Luke 24, and we're going to start in verse 1. Luke 24, verse 1, and go to right about uh, verse uh, 12. Says this, and if you'd like to stand where you are, that would be great. But uh, let us listen in respect of God's word to us this morning, this afternoon, this evening. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene. Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of God for the people of God, and together we say, thanks be to God. Can you picture with me Easter Sunday morning, three days after Christ's lifeless body was placed into a borrowed tomb? The women had woken up early that morning, and I can imagine they gathered their spices together in the, the coming sunrise, and then they perhaps walked quietly and purposefully towards the tomb. I think as they walked, perhaps they were reenacting what had happened, the previous Friday night. Pictures of Jesus on the cross, grief and sorrow mixed into their contemplation. And then when they arrived at the tomb, 
They expected that there would be a stone in front of it that they would have to roll away. They're expecting to find a broken and decomposing body of, of Jesus, their master and their friend. Instead, they encountered two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning. I mean, that would be unexpected even for us today. And you want to talk stress. <laughs> they were so frightened that the scripture says that they bowed down to the ground with their faces right there. I mean, what would that be like? I'm, I'm kind of thinking that those ladies are going to need a spa treatment after this. <laughs> this was unexpected. This was a change of plans. And then the men asked the women, why do you look for the living among the dead? What? The living among the dead? One of the three women in Luke's narration is named Mary Magdalene, the same that had seven demons cast out of her by Jesus. Mary Magdalene, I can expect, had been through a lot in her life. But here she is on this Sunday morning, early in the morning, and, and she's trying to process what is going on around her. It doesn't make much sense. The men then say, remember what he told you while he was still with you. Remember what he told you while he was still with you. Remembering. So at some point, Jesus had told them exactly what was going to happen, but they didn't understand it. They weren't able to process it then. Mary, Joanna, can you imagine Jesus? Mary, Joanna, come here, come here. Come a little closer. I want you to hear this. The Son of Man must be crucified and delivered over to the hands of sinners, crucified, and on the third day, the third day, girls, be raised again. The words of Jesus. Jesus' voice, his inflection, his, his pitch, his rhythm, his diction, his words, coming back to the heart of these women. Remember, remember, how many times before had, had Jesus verbally, verbally pointed to his death and resurrection on the cross in the presence of his disciples? Matthew 12, 39 through 40, we know it says, But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation craves for a sign, and yet no sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so will the Son of Man be. Bingo! Ding, 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 ding. Mark 9.9, 9, as they were coming down from the mountain, he gave them orders not to relate to anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man rose from the dead. For these women, all of a sudden the pieces of the puzzle were coming together and they understood, they understood what Jesus had said to them. They remembered. They were able to look back, to look forward to a reimagined future. The future where the Son of God defies death and is the fulfillment of the Jewish prophecies found in the Old Testament. The resurrection brings clarity of Jesus' words to the disciples, and the resurrection brings clarity to Scripture. The Old Testament before Easter was understood in, in light of Israel's history and, and Israel's trajectory. But now scripture has acquired a new meaning and the disciples and we ourselves can reread it through the lens of Jesus' death and resurrection. The connection of the Old Testament to the New Testament, previous understanding reframed through the fulfilled Messiah. And you understand today that, that most Jews sadly still are looking for the coming of the Messiah. A couple of months back, I was perusing some information on Messianic prophecy and, and how the Jewish church and culture understood uh, in context of who the Messiah is today. And I came across online a kind of a chat room for, for uh, rabbinical um, rabbis, I guess is what you would call it. And it was very intriguing to me because several of them, most of them, were very much without hope and had given up on, on ever seeing the Messiah come to our world. And then a few of them said that the Messiah had already come, but not as we know it, but they were saying that the Messiah lives within each and every one of us. And as we go about our good works and our good deeds, that that, that there is the Messiah. 
<laughs> so disillusional. Because I'm here to tell you today, the Messiah has come. His name is Jesus. And there is no reason to wonder anymore or lose hope. And yet, in the fog of our stress, with our patience stretched thin, and the familiar now unfamiliar, we tend to have the same problem that the women had that day. As they were met with a stone rolled away from the tomb, and they, they could not remember nor piece together the miracle of Christ coming back from the dead, their forgetfulness created a stumbling block to, to clarity and understanding. This week I was listening to Craig Rochelle's leadership podcast, and I didn't encourage you to take a look at that if you're a, you're a leader in the church or in your, your business or even in your home. <laughs> but in his podcast, he's been speaking to leadership um, in crisis, and he's been talking about um, leading from home. And he began listing all the times that in the past he has led through, through world crises and, and, and crises in America. And he talked about the Oklahoma City bombing. He talked about 9-11 and Tiananmen Square and Hurricane Katrina and the Boston Marathon bombing. bombing. And I realized, kind of struck me, oh, I, I'm the same age as Craig Rochelle, because um, I remember all those things too. I've gone through all of those things too. And then I began to remember some things that were a little more personal to my family and myself that, that we have gone through. July 17th, 1995, about 12.15 in the morning, climbing into the jump seat in a life flight plane with my newborn son in the back with a myriad of tubes and gauges monitoring his every function, wondering what in the world am I doing in this place and <laughs> in this time, wondering why this was happening to, to David and I and our family, wondering if my son would make it through the night, and then grateful, grateful for all those that began praying for us all around the world, <laughs> grateful for God's provision for us and his calming presence over the next day and nights and weeks. I bet you have your own list, personal and far-reaching, the things that have left maybe a scar on your heart or a caution when it comes to trust, stress marks on your body or soul when when the pressure, the stress, became too much. And I bet right now that at the top of your list, like mine, is this pandemic that we are going through. And whereas I get it, this, this time in history is a little bit different in comparison to something like 9-11 or the loss of a loved one or, or a family crisis, but it is a place where we desperately need to remember <laughs> the words of Christ, the living word of God to give us hope and comfort and help us make sense of the present and the future that is coming. Not that we should be mired in the past. Not that we should hold on to the past in dogged control or abject loss. But can we take the good news of Christ Christ is alive and living right now in this time and let that sentiment, that truth, set the tone for an altered future for ourselves and our families and our churches, our world, our country. Let me share with you a, a simple story. A young boy was staying with his grandparents while his parents were, were gone. And he had brought his slingshot with him to kind of pass the time, you know, boys, girls, and their slingshots. <laughs> and he practiced in the forest out back of his uh, grandparents' uh, farm. He never seemed to be able to hit his target. And his grandma kept chickens in the backyard and she liked to share the eggs with her neighbors. And then so he, uh, so he came back one day from that back 40, the, the woods behind his grandparents' house. He spied one of his grandma's best egg layers outside of the chicken coop. And on an impulse, he took aim and let it fly. Well, you know what happened, don't you? The stone hit, and the chicken fell dead. <laughs> Desperately, he hid the chicken, only to look up and, and see his sister watching. 
Becca, his sister, had seen it all. And she put a finger to her lips and walked away. After lunch that day, uh, Grandma, she uh, said to Becca, Becca, can you uh, help me with the dishes, please? But Becca shook her head and said, oh, no, 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 Danny, <laughs> her brother. Danny, Danny, he wanted to help today. And she put her fingers to her lips and said, remember the chicken? <laughs> so Danny did the dishes. Later, Grandpa asked the kids if they wanted to go fishing before supper. Becca, wanting Grandpa all to herself, smiled sweetly and said, oh yeah, she wanted to go, but Danny, Danny really had to finish some homework. Again, she whispered to her brother, remember the chicken? <laughs> Danny stayed behind, even though his homework was already done. After several days of doing both his chores and Becca's and, and missing out on several fine opportunities to do some fun things with his Grandpa or Grandma, Danny finally couldn't stand it anymore. He confessed to Grandma that he'd killed her best chicken. She said to him, Thank you for confessing. I know, Danny, she said, giving him a hug. I, I was standing at the window, and I saw the whole thing. Because I love you, I forgive you. I only did wonder, though, how long it would take you to stand up to your sister and be no longer her slave. In the story of Luke, the women that Easter Sunday so long ago remembered Jesus' words, and it changed everything for them. They were no longer a slave to, to their grief. They were no longer a slave to, to the unknown. They understood that there was a future for them as their friend, as their Savior had come back from the dead. And thus, <laughs> these women, they became the first evangelists sharing the good news of Christ. But Luke says, some considered their words nonsense. Why is that? Why would they not believe these women? Why did they scoff at their story? Could it be that the, that the women left out something very important? Could it be that they forgot to remind the people that they were sharing the story with of Jesus' words? <laughs> we're not sure exactly for what reasons they were scoffed at. But yet if you continue on reading in, in Luke 24, 23, as, as the two people were walking to Emmaus and, and they're sharing with the Savior, come to find out, what the women had told them, they said, well, they, uh, the women, they said that the body was missing and they had seen angels who told them Jesus is alive. There's something very important missing from even that testimony, the words of Jesus. And we're not just talking about forgetting an anniversary date or where you set your keys down or where you parked your car because, you know, we know people forget those things all the time, right? Right? <laughs> I think the ladies may have gotten so caught up in the story that they forgot <laughs> to include the words of Jesus. Something so important, something that connected the past to the future, something that spoke to their hearts and created clarity and understanding and peace for them. Sometimes we get so caught up in comforting people right now and, and telling them that it's going to be all right, that, that we too forget the words of Jesus and to share them with those around of us. His words come back to me and they're there in, in the Bible for us to look at. The words like, I will never leave you nor forsake you. His words like, peace be unto you. And one of my favorites if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Maybe you are familiar that in some Bibles, the words of Jesus are in red letters. They stand out. They are very readable, and unless maybe you're colorblind. <laughs> but who are these words for? These red letter words, these words of Christ, they are for those who will remember and claim and receive the resurrection of our risen Lord and Savior in their own hearts and in their own lives. Luke 21, 29 through 33. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. 
when they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer, <laughs> summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Words are important these days, aren't they? When we are hampered by shelter in place orders and are concerned for others to not have them contract this, this disease, sometimes all we have is words. Words that we can share with one another. And why wouldn't we share the words of Jesus with those we care about, with those we meet, with those we gather with? online. When we cannot gather physically, words become our touch, our caress, our kiss. Why do you think in wartime or when someone is deployed that a phone call or a letter becomes so important? I challenge you today, this Easter, to look at Jesus's words, to maybe find a, a red letter Bible or, or take a look at a Bible app and, and look for the red letters, especially here in these these Easter stories, the story of passion in the Bible, Passion Week. <laughs> Find the red letters of Jesus and let them speak to you and then let them speak to others. The words of Jesus are our touch <laughs> with the risen Savior. His embrace, his kiss, his caress, words remembered hope renewed. The echoes of the past mingling with the hope for our future. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that you left with us upon this earth your words. Your words that are there for us to read and take in and know God. Today we know that it's a different Sunday for most of us around the world as people are meeting online and are craving the, the touch of each other. Oh God, let your touch be your words today. Help us to get into the Bible. Help us to get into scripture and let it come alive for us today as you were made alive that Easter Sunday. And we proclaim, God, we love you. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation I turned to hell. the darkness, your loving kindness, so through the shadows of my soul, the work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my Lord. down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours. Hallelujah, praise the one 
Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no is the victory oh, oh, oh. hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your life my living home. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. That salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my my living home God you are my living home God you are our only hope thank you Jesus would you read these words with me as our benediction this Easter they'll be on the screen let us remember the cross is still a place for forgiveness. The tomb is still empty. The stone still rolled away. The sun is still risen. Hallelujah and amen.